Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Razer Jungle Cat. This is a controller for select Android phones that looks a lot like a Nintendo Switch, but you are using your Android smartphone, and it's got some very sensitive buttons on here that I keep hitting. Uh, we're going to take a look at what this controller is all about here in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this controller is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The price point for the controller is $99. It uses Bluetooth Low Energy. And if you want to use it like we've got it working here, you need a phone that's compatible with the special cases that it comes with. Uh, so right now, at the time I'm recording this video, it works with the Note 9 from Samsung. It also works with the Samsung S10 Plus, and it works with the Razer Phone 2. Uh, but that is it here in the U.S. I believe in Europe they might have an additional case for Huawei, uh, but as far as I've been able to test, these three phones here in the U.S. are the only ones that will fit the special cases that you need. Uh, the cases themselves are not all that sturdy, as you can see. They flex quite a bit, so I don't think this is going to provide any protection for your phone at all, really. It's just a mounting bracket to get the controller attached. So if you have an existing case, you've got to take it out of that case, put it in this one. And then what you can do is slide the controllers onto these little tracks here to secure it. And it clicks in, and it has a nice secure click. But I'm finding the controllers still wobble quite a bit here uh, on both sides. So it doesn't have a terrific feel to it. It doesn't seem to have the tightness that you'd feel with a Nintendo Switch. And even the Switch has a bit of flex to it. This has got a lot of flex, as you can see here. And I wasn't all that crazy about it. Now, as for buttons, uh, you've got a D-pad here, and like a lot of the other Razer controllers I've played around with, there is practically zero travel to this D-pad. It is incredibly sensitive. Uh, they're also very clicky, as you can hear there. Uh, so if you just lightly tap the button, it's going to fire off. There really is not much distance between uh, the button push and the actuation here, at least with the D-pad. Uh, the buttons on the other side are about the same as well, very, very clicky. I don't like the fact, though, that the buttons for the controller here are below the thumbstick, but I, that's just my preference. Uh, we're going to talk to an expert on this in a few minutes to get his take on it. Uh, the sticks feel very close to the Nintendo Switch sticks. Uh, they are clicky sticks, so you can push them down. Uh, they really feel almost the same as the Switch does, so that was pretty well executed there. Uh, you've got a select and start button on each side, and then you also have your uh, shoulder uh, triggers and shoulder buttons here. Uh, these are simple digital buttons, not analog, so they're either on or off. And if you don't have a compatible phone, you can still use the controller because they can dock to this little mounting bracket here, and then you can use them separately. So you can put your phone on a stand, I guess. Oops, they pop out easily, as you can see there. Uh, and you get this tiny little controller that you can use. And again, they do pop out pretty easily. Uh, so if you don't have a compatible phone, it might work on its own because it is a nice little compact uh, controller that you can take with you. Uh, but I think if you have large hands, it may not work so well. Uh, these are powered by Bluetooth low energy radios. And as such, you should get a decent amount of battery life out of these, and they probably won't need to be charged all that often. What I did not like for the price point here is that they don't give you any charging cables in the box. You gotta find your own USB-C charging cables and power adapters to get them charged up, so be ready to do that. I'm pretty sure you can use them individually. Uh, I believe when they're both on, they act as a pair. Uh, and it works with PCs, they say, as well. So there's a little bit more than just the basic Android functionality here, but I think realistically, uh, given the uniqueness of the design, you're probably going to want to get this paired up with a phone uh, that's compatible with it. Now, these are two independent devices, but when both are on, they sync with each other directly and then have a single connection to your phone. So if you turn on one and not the other, you can use it on its own. But once the other one comes on, it becomes a single controller. So I don't think this is going to work the same way your Switch Joy-Cons work in that you can have a two-player instant uh, game going on with two independent controllers. I don't believe that's how this one works, at least insofar as our testing is concerned and also through reading the manual. 
Uh, the latency on this is not bad. We did our usual test where we take our iPhone at 240 frames per second and record a button push and the screen at the same time to see how long it takes for something to activate on screen. And there we saw a lag of about 76 to 84 milliseconds, which actually for an Android device is not bad. Again, this was on the Note 9 phone. So depending on the device you're using, your mileage may vary. But I was pleased to see that it was below 100 milliseconds, which has not been the experience I've had in the past with many other Android devices. So altogether, I think the uh, latency on this one is pretty much acceptable for most of the mobile games that you're going to play on it. Now they do have an app that you can use to configure it. Let's boot that up and see how you can customize the controller for your particular needs. So this is the GamePad app that Razer puts together. And what it will do is break your apps down into things that are compatible and things that are untested. There's a bunch of compatible games that do work with it and support the sensitivity controls and the button remapping that you can do. And the untested games they're saying may or may not work depending on how they have been coded. Uh, you can add any app on your phone to this just by clicking the add button there to jump into it. And it was not immediately apparent to me how you can go in and actually configure things because if I just tap on Fortnite right now, it's going to load up Fortnite. But if you push and hold down, what it will do is bring up the menu options here. And the only customization you really have is just stick uh, sensitivity without really getting any ideas to what impact this slider has. Uh, so I would have loved to have seen something on screen that I could use to test uh, the sensitivity without having to jump back and forth to the game. But this is the only thing you get here is just a slider that doesn't give you a lot of indication as to what exactly it is you're adjusting. Uh, but then you can also remap keys. Uh, so you can go through here and map different buttons to different functions if you want. Uh, so that's an option that you have there. But that's pretty much it. There isn't much in the way of customization on this controller and what things you can customize don't provide a lot of information to tell you what it is you're exactly doing. And given how robust the Razer applications are on Windows for their keyboards and game controllers, it was kind of surprising to see so little uh, customization options here, but you can do some basic button mapping. Uh, one thing it doesn't do though, at least in our testing, is map the controller to touchscreen functions. So the games that don't support controllers uh, will not support them with the app. There's no way to make that work. So just keep that in mind. So what about gameplay? Well, I'm going to bring on an expert, Jake Lindy, who helps us out here on the channel. This is your first time on camera, but people have heard your voice before. Uh, you are my mobile gamer because this is your phone, which you graciously donated to the, the yeah. cause here. Yeah, I get paid to play video games. So, I mean, you know, it's I like can't a dream complain. job for you, yeah. right? No yeah. complaints here. Yeah. And, and so <laughs> you played a bunch of games, and we took a lot of footage of it. I did, yes. So, and we did a bunch of different types of games. So let's start off with Fortnite, okay. uh, which is running right now on screen. So what, what was the Fortnite experience like on here? So I started off with Fortnite, and when I normally play it on my phone, I'll hook up an Xbox controller to it. So mm -hmm. when I'm using the Xbox controller, i got to kind of balance it on my lap. So it was nice just to be able to hold it and have the screen right there in between your hands. Right, so it was like a switch in that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, you, know, you don't have to try to finagle it and mm -hmm. have it falling off your lap. Right. But playing with this versus the Xbox controller, it has the thumb pads up at the top, the joysticks there. So but on the Xbox controller, you have the joysticks at the bottom and the buttons on the top. So mm -hmm. it kind of inverted it that way. Right. So it's a different fe it was a different feel because the, button, the, the sticks are in a different place. Yeah. And then a yeah. Sony controller would probably have them lower, I think, on... On, on the layout, so it's a bit yeah. of a getting, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Probably more left to right, yeah. yeah. And but, it, but it felt okay though. It felt all right for most of the part. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a jump from the top to the bottom there, hitting the A button to jump and then mm -hmm. going up to move around and look oh, around. Oh, okay. So. Oh, so that was a little tricky then because you had to move your thumb a lot. To yeah. Do that. Okay. Yeah, that was a little tough getting mm -hmm. used to that. And uh, I mean, it was all right. It's something like for casual, but I'd probably prefer the Xbox controller for playing a shooter game like that. Right. So you would not you would not replace this with your you wouldn't replace your Xbox controller with this for a Fortnite. No. Yeah. No. Unless, I'd rather unless just use the Xbox controller. Right. Unless you're like on the road and this is more convenient, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. You know, you want to hop on for a game before bed. You're just mm -hmm. laying there. And yep. Yeah. It's time to you know, pop it on. But if you're really well trying like to play, I'd use the Xbox one. Got it. All right. So let's move on now to Sonic the Hedgehog, which is on screen here. But we had you doing some gameplay. Now that you did with the D-pad, right? Yeah, it's just the D-pad on the left there and then just the buttons there. And how so. did the short throw of the, the buttons there 
work for you. I actually really liked it. They're very like, sensitive, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's nice because you don't have to move your hand, your thumb around very far. Okay. Everything's right there. You can just kind of angle your thumb versus mm -hmm. pick it up and move it, you mm -hmm. know? And then uh, we also did some things that were definitely not on the supported list, which were emulators. So we did yes. the Dolphin emulator, so that worked okay, right? Yeah, that felt really good. I really liked the joystick for that. It was just like a very, it's very short kind of travel on mm -hmm. it. Like it's, you know, you just have to go a little, a little bit left, a little bit to the right. Pretty sensitive, and, and you, that was it. You can get all the way there, yeah. And it so. paired up, so there wasn't any compatibility issues with that. It saw the controller and it worked. Yeah, it just worked right up, just mm -hmm. worked fine. Um, you you had, had the, the PSP emulator too? Yeah, we ran a, it was the Burnout game, mm -hmm. and everything worked fine with that. That worked well. Well, no really complaints there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really good for like racing games and you know like jet ski games. I guess mm -hmm. you know it works fine for those. So it's a good experience there. Yeah. All yeah. right. Now you were mentioning to me off camera that you felt it felt a little flimsy. Is that still something you yeah want to I stick mean, to there? Yeah. I mean the build it just feels like honestly just feels like cheap plastic. And then mm -hmm. when you kind of like grab it and go yeah and you do that with it, it's sort of like. You know, it just doesn't feel stable. For $100, I was expecting it. They make it look like it's made out of metal in the yeah. ad. You know, like it's like a really nice Well, what struck me thing. was just how nice it snaps in. Like you get that nice click when, you, when it connects. Yeah. But it didn't yeah. feel that way after it connected. So that, that was something that threw me off a little bit there. So what's your final verdict on this? Do you think it's better than nothing? Or is it something that you would, if you were in the market for something like this, would this be something you'd consider? So I'd say if you know if you have a hundred bucks to spend, go ahead and spend it. <laughs> I think it's a little overpriced, honestly. Yeah. You can get an Xbox controller and one of those attachments. You can put your phone right on the top of it right. for you know sixty, seventy bucks or something like that. I would guess, and it would perform better, I think. But I think that's kind of more of a convenience travel factor is what you'd use with this, kind mm -hmm. of like with the Switch. Okay. You know? So yeah. I. Three out of five. Three out of five. Wow. Okay, <laughs> good. Well, I appreciate it because you are the expert on this mobile gaming stuff. So thank you for your input on this. Appreciate yeah. it. Your first appearance on camera. Yeah. You can get back yeah. to work now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you. We'll see you in a bit. All right. Thanks. <laughs> So that's going to do it for this look at the Razer Jungle Cat. Uh, my opinion is very close to Jake's on this one. I'm not a big fan of these really sensitive D-pads, but if it's something that you've used before on other Razer controllers, this will feel very similar. Uh, but I was disappointed that there is not more Android phone compatibility, and I was also disappointed that uh, the phones that are compatible with it don't really have a nice, tight, and secure fit. These controllers really do move around quite a bit, uh, which reduces the premium feel that you would expect from something that costs this much. But if you've got the phone, uh, this will work quite well and it will give you that Switch-like experience. Uh, just know though that when you are using it, your charging port is blocked, uh, so your phone will not be able to be used plugged in. And it's also not compatible, of course, with the iPhone either. So this is strictly Android. And again, for the best experience, you have to use one of the three phones that it's compatible with. So that's going to do it for this look at the Razer Jungle Cat. Thanks to Jake for coming on camera and giving his insight into the product as well. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.